I recently did a video on how Florida's Surgeon General, Dr. Ladapo, had presented some pretty weak rationale as scientific evidence for his call to halt messenger RNA COVID vaccines. I've been doing some additional research on this, and now I feel his rationale is even weaker than I thought. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're having a good day. So as you know, I'm always trying to increase my own knowledge base. I really am involved in the science and the health aspects of it and want to present to you the most accurate information that I have so that you can be educated to make the best decisions for yourself and your loved ones and even as you talk to other people. Now, I also have a problem. When people, especially those in power and authority, make influential statements that have little evidence to back them up. And that's where we find ourselves now with this particular topic. So we're going to be talking about how the Florida Surgeon General, how he had this rationale in the first place for um, halting the um, DNAs. But also, I'm going to present an analysis and a rebuttal, speaking with a few other experts and hearing also of a, from an expert as to what his rationale actually was and what he presented. And if it scientifically even makes sense for what he was doing based upon this is very complicated science. Now, I am going to be getting more into the scientific weeds than I usually do, but I think it's important because if you're making a, a discussion and a decision based upon this information, you have to understand why I don't think what he presented is really, in fact, I'm going to say it's incredibly unlikely that what he's saying is, 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 is really happening. Okay. But, you know, I had said before that it's bio biologically plausible what he offered. I'm not even so sure of that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to be presenting and kind of the way I was thinking about this, it actually kind of came to mind because I was watching a, uh, a Seinfeld um, little clip over the weekend. And it was the one where um, it was actually a, a spinoff of the uh, the JFK movie, if you remember, when Kevin Costner described the, the bullet and the course that it had to have taken from where the angles were and everything in order to have actually struck JFK. And if you remember the Seinfeld episode was, uh, there was this magical loogie that Kramer had spit at Keith Hernandez and they then went through the exact same, um, type of discussion with the whiteboard and everything like that and whatever. And, uh, as to how this magical loogie could have hit Keith Hernandez based upon, again, the angles. Very funny. One of my favorite episodes. But anyways, th that's the type of, um, patterning the kind of, the kind of progression that would have to happen in order for what Dr. Lapot Dr. Ladapo said is um his concerns are okay so now um, as far as what his rationale was, you know, and I would encourage you go back, please, to watch the video that I did on this. I'm not going to go into all the details. There was a back and forth conversation between him and the FDA, him saying things from the FDA, the FDA rebutting it, him saying that it's not enough. But as a whole, the biggest part of his argument was was the claim that there were billions of DNA particles. So remember, messenger RNA is what the vaccine is. Billions of DNA particles that were included, that were also in the vial of the vaccines, and that these themselves could be integrated into the human DNA, and that it could go on to cause things like leukemia, lymphomas, and autoimmune diseases and other problems. So that's his re rationale as to why they should halt the messenger RNA vaccine. Now, it so happens though, as I had mentioned, when you look at the study that he actually put forth, it was not published. It was peer. It was. It was not peer reviewed. It was just a PDF that was sent out that I can't even see. Like, where would it be published in the first place? And so that's not the way that proper scientific information is supposed to be put out to the public, and certainly not the type of information that the Surgeon General should be using as the main source of the rationale. Now, he did go on to say that if people do have the concerns that he does of the messenger RNA COVID vaccines, that there is a more traditional protein-based vaccine that he said people could use instead called Novavax. And so he did say that's there. And so if there are people who are okay with getting a regular vaccine, they want to get vaccinated, they don't want to do messenger RNA, there is another option. It is widely available. I checked, they, I asked the pharmacy, they had it at our Publix here in Carrollwood, uh, in Tampa as well. So it does seem to be available if that's something that some people want to do.
Okay. Now, one of I, so the couple of the sources that I've spoken to about this information, um, one of them, and I'm not going to mention their names because they didn't give me permission to, but they're trusted sources that I go to. One was the head of um, was a, was a was a very up involved in the virology department at University of South Florida. Um, um, another is a oncologist, hematologist who's done a lot of research, a lot of work about DNA, DNA replication, etc. So these are people who are very scientifically day to day. Their careers have been based upon understanding this stuff that I myself am really still learning about. I mean, we learned about a lot of this stuff in medical school, but I certainly haven't been applying it every day as part of my medical practice. I'm also going to be talking about information that was shared from Dr. Paul Office. So he's somebody who's a, a public figure. Um, he actually published and wrote about this. I think it was a, a blog that he did. Um, so I'm saying his name because obviously out there. And you may have heard me talk about Dr. Offen before. He is the director of vaccine education um, at Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania, which is um, of Philadelphia, excuse me, certainly one of the premier um, children's hospitals in the country. He's also a member of the FDA um, Vaccine and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee. He was one of the doctors that was on the committee that I presented to the three different times at the beginning of the rollout of the um, COVID with the emergency authorizations. Now, he certainly is somebody who is a very big advocate of vaccines, okay? But also, several times through the past few years, he was like the only dissenting voice about certain things um, in terms of the should we really be universally recommending the vaccine, especially for healthy children. And he did go on to actually make this statement. The CDC corrected, um, the CDC created the false perception that healthy young people who have already been vaccinated or naturally infected or both hybrid uh, will be protected against severe disease only if they receive the updated vaccine. Okay. So although, again, he certainly is part of the industry, he's helped create vaccines. He is the, a person that I listen to more simply because of the fact that he has offered this dissenting voice uh, opinion. He um, is out there saying how he says it, but he doesn't feel like he has to toe the party line. So that's one of the reasons why I, I do look to him as a, somebody who's can be a guiding voice, somebody who I, when I'm not understanding that. So as far as with this, he actually did a point by point to some of the things that Dr. Lopato, uh, Ladapo talked about, but I'm going to be presenting his information plus what I've learned from the others. Okay. So in terms of this, as I said, I'm going to need to get a little technical here. Okay. So first of all, let's make the assumption that the DNA that was in this non-published, non-peer-reviewed paper is actually in the DNA, in the messenger RNA COVID virus in the first place. Okay. We're not actually sure since it hasn't been peer reviewed, but let's assume that that was true. Okay. Now, if that's the case, you know, that there were that with all of these in there. Now, of course, if there's no doubt that DNA itself <coughs> is involved in the making of the messenger RNA vaccines. Okay. Part of the regular process. What they do is they start off with a plasmid DNA. Now, this is a circular DNA. This is different than what we have in our genes, which is a linear. This is a circular, and it is something that is found um, in more like in uh, in pathogens, and actually, in all bact bacteria have this form of these plasmids. Um, and and so what it does is they they this small DNA. They um they are actually physically separated from chromosomal DNA um and they uh, of the actual bacteria so there's the chromosomes in the nucleus but then there are also these plasma DNA and they are actually made and replicated differently and independently of the bacteria um the DNA itself that's within the nucleus within the chromosomes okay now in the case of this vaccine the plasmid contain the the plasmid DNA the gene um it was the gene that coded for the the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein right we all know about our spike protein mm -hmm. Of which, in my opinion, it's the spike protein itself that's causing people to have problems, whether it's from the wild virus or from the vaccine production. Again, not what we're talking about today, but, you know, I've shared these thoughts before. Now, what happens is that within the bacteria, these plasmid um, DNAs are being replicated of the SARS-CoV-2. It's amplified in this way in the bacteria. The bacteria itself is then cut open, and then the plasmid is released, and the DNA that codes for the spike protein itself is isolated. Okay, so the very small protein chain relative to what a chromosome looks like, even relative to what the whole plasmid looks like, they isolate the DNA 
from the, for the spike protein. Okay. Then there is an enzyme called RNA polymerase, and its job is to take DNA and turn it into messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is then turned into by by is, is then read by some um, by by this RNA polymerase in order to uh, and then the messenger RNA is made and messenger RNA goes on to make proteins such as enzymes or structural proteins like a spike protein or all the proteins in our body. Now, after this is separated. And the and the RNA itself is done. They go through a multitude of filtration processes, of purification steps, in order to further isolate the messenger RNA of the spike protein in this case. Okay. Now, it is possible that despite all of this purification, all of this um, filtration, that small amounts of DNA, small particles of DNA, could still make it through. Okay. So we're going to say, okay, so it could still make it through. Okay. So is that all? No, it's not. Okay. So, um, first of all, in order for then to have the, the DNA that was somehow getting through to be incorporated into the DNA itself, that itself, you know, and Dr. Offit flat out says that's a really, it's such an impossible thing to do. I was told the exact same thing by the, my two colleagues who I mentioned before. Okay. So first of all, in order for that process to happen going from vial into human DNA. First of all, the foreign DNA itself has to enter into the cytoplasm. So in our cells, the nucleus in the middle, the cytoplasm is all of the liquid and everything that's inside the cell membrane. And that's where things like mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes, that's where they all reside, not in the nucleus. Now, in terms of the messenger RNA itself, it is wrapped and it's produced specifically in these nano um, nanolipids. The, when the lipid is fat, the cell membrane itself is fat. Fats mix with fat. So if there's a membrane and, it, and, then, the, and then the nanolipid mixes with it, it then can meld and open up into that way and then and opens up a hole in order to release the messenger RNA. Now, from everything that I can see, the DNA that may be in this, according to Dr. Ladapo's um, rationale here, there's no tr way of transporting that in because that is just, according to them, just freely floating more in the vial itself in the liquid. It's not being transported by the lipid. So, A, is it actually getting into the, into the cell itself? Okay. Furthermore, if it did, okay, the plasma, okay, if this plasma DNA um, would then make itself in, it would most likely be destroyed in the cytoplasm. There are particular proteins in our cytoplasm in order to destroy foreign DNA. Okay, so um, and, and not only that, in order to get it into the um, the into the nucleus itself, there has to be what's referred to as a nuclear access signal. OK, and from everything that I can tell, the these small DNA fractions, they don't have these activating um, 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 access signals in order to move its way into the DNA, so into the and sorry, into the nucleus. So now there is great question as to whether it can get to the cell itself and then would it even get into the nucleus itself? OK, now it does appear that there's little chance for that actually to happen to get in. OK, now. In order, so, but let's say it does get into the, um, into the, um, into the nucleus. Okay. At that point, in order for it to be incorporated into our DNA, our DNA would have to be cut and then it would have to be inserted. And again, the, the um, enzymes that are the, in our, or, or, which are in our cells are kind of preventing them from even getting there. And they don't also have the enzymes to do the snip and attach. Okay. Now, even if it does get in, okay, let's also acknowledge we are exposed to foreign protein, I'm sorry, foreign DNA all the time. The gut microbiome, that's all DNA. That is something that we are exposed to. The food we eat, if you live on this planet and you eat protein and you eat uh, animals or plants, they contain DNA too. So, what would necessarily be special about this particular chunk, um, small chunk, I should say, of the DNA from all of these things happening that would then get into our cells relative to any of the other um, types of um, DNA that we are being exposed to in terms of foreign proteins. So, as you can see, quite a magical piece of DNA this must be in order to do that. Now, in terms of my conclusions of all of this, 
it does seem to me as Dr. Um, um, Ladapo does, does not really understand the science. Or at least he does and he doesn't present it. He may be selectively um, presenting the information in order to make his case. Because let's face it, we do know that he has not been a supporter of messenger RNA vaccines from before he became Florida Surgeon General. In fact, it seems as if that's why he became Florida Surgeon General is because of his of, of his views relative to this vaccine um, and being in line with the governor's um, views. Okay, Now, whether people should or should not be getting a messenger RNA vaccine or a COVID regular one, that's a completely different subject, okay? Um, and again, whether or not a person should get a booster, again, that's really what the difference is, because as we talked about, 97% of people have immunity of some form or another. So we've talked about, does the booster itself really provide any benefit to it? Maybe it does for a few months. As I mentioned a few videos back, that it does seem that the messenger RNA um, vaccine itself, um, that... It seems that it may even give you a more likelihood of catching COVID after a few months of having that vaccine. So go back and look at those videos too, okay? Now, of course, with all of this information, um, it's important to know that you have, you can make your, your your decision. But again, if you're one who, like, I realize only 16% of the new booster is being has been taken by um, Americans, so the overwhelming majority of people have already kind of rejected this boostering. And if you do want to get a booster, you want to avoid the messenger RNA form, there's the Novavax regular protein version. All right, so um, if you have information for me that's from a reputable source that tells me that the information that I've provided to you is wrong or even question, please put it into the comment section. I am not one who believes that because I learned something now that my views can't change if I'm presented with more information. So if you have it, share it. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you.